The Obspot Tail Air is a dream for recording videos and one of the most flexible cameras out there. I'm actually using it right now to record this video. See, no cables and it's tracking me right here on my desk as a second angle to this setup to give you a little bit more of a, a dynamic shot. But whether you're live streaming, showing off products, recording live performances or tracking live sports even, this camera has it all. Oh, and of course, it's a brilliant webcam too. I'll be showing you how I use this camera here in my YouTube studio and you know all the several different ways in which I use it and also how it helps me with content creation in general. I just love how flexible this camera is, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So as well as showing it in practice, I'll show you later as well in detail how the features and the specs you know, come to life if you wanna know what else this camera is capable of. And I love how the tail layer lets me you know, just move around during my live streams as well now all my recordings without losing that important connection with you, my audience. I've placed one of them in the ceiling as well, which serves two purposes. One, it lets me record quite a fun and different angle as well when I'm kind of live streaming in, in a setup over there, which I'll show you in a minute. And two, I can simply customize one of these different presets here to share a cool top-down view of whatever I'm showing you right now. Like it could be this box, could be another product. I love getting creative with my tech reviews and adding some behind the scenes shots as well really makes this video, you know, a little bit more interesting, I think. And it's a great way to share content on other platforms as well, like Instagram and TikTok. For instance, I could have a more traditional shot like this one here for kind of a YouTube review and also have a behind the scenes look for my vlogs or, you know, my other Instagram stories and things like that. And I love that. Picture quality, as you can see, is amazing, right? And for the most part, it really helps me add more flavor as well to my recordings without going out and spending thousands on, a, on another professional camera like this one. I can see this being quite useful as well for people who are trying to, you know, kind of working with uh, live broadcasts. It could be your kind of place of worships and things like that, that you, can, you want to have a, a multi-cam setup. And of course, live streaming, right? This is for, for creators who are wanting to, you know, spice up their streams a little bit. As you can probably tell, I'm having a lot of fun with it, you know, like for gamers, for example, you could have a keyboard cam so people can see, you know, you're playing the game and you're showing your skills with your hands or a joystick angle. If you're not great with the keyboard and mouse like me, you know, I'm a bit of a noob with the keyboard and mouse. But yeah, I just love how you can show different parts of, of your stream and you can switch between them quite quickly as well through the app. And even if we just go with one camera, I love how you can, you know, with that single camera, have so many different shots in different crop sizes. It's 4K, so, you know, the crop quality will still be good. This is really cool because, you know, it gives you that nice effect that you have more than one camera at play. And ultimately, this helps with engagement, right? You know, if, you, if you're always showing the same shot, people do get bored. Of course, having multiple tail layers will add even more angles which is incredible and it becomes like a, a tv broadcast setup here but i've been using this for a bit of vlogging as well which is great and i just love how i can just place it anywhere and hit record and without any cables you know like it is right now i can just talk to it and you know do my thing without you know worrying about cables and recordings i'll get into the specs in a bit but the tracking is super smooth and very responsive whether i'm indoors here you know in a controlled environment or outdoors as a solo creator is one of the things that I'm like, I'm always panicking when I try to record something that is a little bit more involved. And I'm always looking for, you know, for ways to both improve my content with different shots and, you know, higher quality shots, but also make it easy for me to create because YouTube is still not my full-time job. So the tail air comes really handy. You know, it ticks those two boxes for me perfectly. From a sensor perspective, it's got a decent sensor in it as well. It's a one over 1.8 inch sensor. And that results in a 23 mil equivalent at f 1.8 which is really great for that you know a shallow depth of field that blurry background and that bokeh that we love right as we've seen with other obspot cameras you know their sensor is no joke i mean seriously they are really really good and can record great video in any lighting situation especially in low light i compared this with other cameras they really deliver on that if it's too bright like if you're doing a scene in a kind of in a, in a bit of a, a sunny space or or outside you could be at a beach for example or you know doing some sort of uh, snowboarding skiing or whatever you might want to consider the ND filter. You can buy that separately. The camera is packed with features. As I mentioned earlier, you can add the illusion of having a multicam even with a single camera because it will kind of use that 4K shot and you know, provide different angles that you can configure yourself manually. And having that ability is great. And that's all thanks to that 4K quality here, which can go up to 30 frames per second. Or you can do 1080p up to 60 frames per second as well. This is great if you're trying to record displays during a live stream or you know showing off lots of detail. It does help keep everything looking nice and smooth. And you know, if there's movement as well, and then you wanna slow down the footage a little bit, you know, that 60 frames per second can help you there. You can output the video to another device via USB-C, HDMI, and also record to a micro SD card, which is what I'm doing right now, just using the, you know, the built-in slot 
uh, right here. And you can also record via NDI, but more on that later. It does have a microphone built in, which is fine if you're kind of just by yourself in a quiet space, a controlled environment in, in a room. And if you're quite close to it, there's no problem at all. But it also has a 3.5 mil microphone jack, which is perfect for using something a little bit more professional, like a wireless microphone. And that's basically what I do. And this is the quality in normal daylight. This is, you know, it's quite a, a lot of windows here, a lot of sunlight coming in. But yeah, really good 4K quality. And you can see the background is nice and blurry. You know, and if I was to show a new device, this is my new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Pretty decent, right? The body itself, the whole camera, the whole setup here, you know, is extremely well built. And you can tell it's got quite some heft to it as well, which is great. If you take it outside, it's not gonna fly off anywhere. It can be powered in three different ways. Again, helping you with that flexibility as well. It can be powered by the battery in it, which lasts almost like two hours. But you can also power it via USB-C or power over ethernet using this adapter here as well that you can get separately. And if you're using multiple tail layers like I am here, you can connect them all via NDI and they will show up in something like OBS as well. This works really well over Wi-Fi, which for me is fantastic as it means less cables. I'm always kind of trying to find solutions you know, with less cables, but you do need an NDI license for that. If you have patchy Wi-Fi though, and you wanna kind of make sure that you're getting the best connection at all times, you can also use the ethernet adapter and plug that into your router or your switch or whatever. The battery, like I said, lasts about two hours, which is plenty for streaming, right? But the tracking is the thing to call out here. The AI tracking functionality really kicks in and make sure that you know it continues to track you. When you go slightly out of the frame and you come back into it, it knows to, to follow it. It's very impressive. Talking about tracking, there are multiple ways to control it. You can either use the gestures or use the app itself. The gestures are very intuitive. They're very, you know, if you've already got one of their cameras, they'll be the same. There's a kind of one additional gesture that, that is different. This L-shaped gesture zooms the picture right into you. And if you do it again, you'll zoom right out. And if you use both hands with this gesture, you can actually control a little bit more smoothly, you know, how much zoom is being applied. You know, you can either zoom in or out just by doing. That's quite neat, right? For instance, to start and stop recording internally, you can simply show the OK sign. The movement of the zoom, as you can tell here, you know, is extremely smooth and you won't see any bumps or jolts while you're doing that. You know, it's very stable. The other way to control the camera is using a remote controller, which you can get separately as well. This is the director view, which is really cool. You can see just with one camera, you get all these different angles just by using that one sensor and kind of cropping in different ways. That's pretty cool. The app is now very easy to use. You know, as, as you can expect, all the camera controls are here. You can control the resolution you want to record in, the output settings, as well as the image settings as well. You know, whether you want HDR on or off, or whether you're going to manual mode even, and you want to adjust the ISO, the exposure, shutter speed, white balance, all the things that, you know, as a videographer, you might want to tweak to your own taste. Not only that, but you can even change, you know, some granular details of the image profile, like the contrast, the sharpness, hue and saturation, you can really kind of dial this in to make the image look just the way you like it. You can change the output of your footage as well, you know, whether you want USB-C, NDI or RTSP all within the app. And one of the things that I really like is the ability to play back, you know, you can play back the image that you just recorded via the app itself, which is nice, and especially if you're not near a computer, you know, if you're out in the field, you know, just in case you're not sure whether, you know, you need to do another take or not. Via the app, you should also spend some time here to, you know, to adjust the angles and crop sizes that, that you're most likely to use because they, you know, they can be presets that you can use during your recording. And if you are planning to use multiple tail layers, the best way to connect them all up is via NDI. A final note on the app before I move on is that you can install this on iOS, Android, as well as having a desktop for your, you know, Windows and Mac as well. As you can expect on the desktop app, you've got loads of controls. If you already know Obspot and you've been using the other cameras like the Tiny 2, for example, it will be used to this app because it's the same app that we use to control the Tiny 2. All these features are amazing, right? The AI tracking and things like that. But what I've been really impressed with is the camera quality, the actual video quality that you get out of it. Honestly, I don't think enough is said about that. You can really see how nice the background looks, you know, like when you're doing a close up shot like this one. Usually you have to spend quite a bit of money to get this sort of effect with a professional camera or a decent lens. And I know it's a subtle difference, kind of a you know, subliminal difference, but people do appreciate those things. You know, when you see it, you, you know it's pleasing. You don't know why it's pleasing, but it does differentiate you and gives you a little bit of an edge over kind of more standard webcams. Whenever I use this to attend virtual meetings in Teams or Zooms for work, it's quite funny actually. You know, people always go, what is that camera? That's amazing. Is that like a professional camera? You know, I get really nice compliments about it, about how professional it looks. I'm super happy with this. Right, all good. And you might be asking, are there any things that you know, you're not happy with? You know, are there any things that need to improve? And the answer is absolutely. You know, I think the app itself has come a long way already, but it could do with a more fluid experience. You know, it's still a little bit 
you can tell. I mean, they, there's always an update, you know, every now and then you notice there's an update to the app, especially when you're controlling multiple cameras, but the app could be a little bit more fluid in that experience. And the other thing is audio. It doesn't really impact me that much, but I'd love to see a future version where, you know, there's a bit more focus on audio quality, but, you know, perhaps opening up the body of the camera, you know, for a bigger microphone casing here, something like we're used to seeing in like smart speakers, and perhaps that will help with picking up sounds, you know, that are a little bit more surrounding. You know, at the moment, it's very directional, and if you're speaking close to it, it's fine, but the minute you go outside, yeah, you're gonna need an external microphone. Like I said, it doesn't bother me because I'm always using this set up here in the studio and I'm surrounded by decent microphones, but I know this could be an important feature for you. I'll be definitely using this in my live streams. You know, I wanna do more live streams this year and this is a, a massive help for me. And also I'm gonna be installing them in different parts of my studio, you know, so expect to see a lot more of this cool and a bit more fun angles, you know, in my reviews. I love the fact that I can have a top-down camera as well for my review videos when I'm kind of, I wanna show a product, you know, in a different angle. And I can control that as well, depending on the level of detail, you know, I can have a wider shot as well as a, a tighter shot, uh, depending on what I'm showing. There are links to everything I showed you here today in the description. And if you're watching this from a TV, just feel free to pause the video here and scan the QR code. And have a lovely day wherever you are, and I hope to see you soon. A galaxy.